the future of Bcash FS on Linux is not looking good. A few weeks ago, I made a video about Bcash FS and the disagreements between its maintainer, Kent Overstreet, and Linus Torvalds, and saying how there might be issues with keeping Bcash FS in the mainline Linux kernel. Well, unfortunately, it looks like some of the predictions I made in that video are coming true. A few days ago, Kent wrote this post on his Patreon. I won't read the posts entirely because it's quite frankly very long, but the takeaway is the future of BcacheFS in the kernel is uncertain and lots of things aren't looking good. Particularly, Linus has said he isn't accepting a 6.13 pull request per an open issue with the Code of Conduct board. And at this point, I, I being Kent Overstreet, have no idea what's going on with the Code of Conduct board. For my part, I have felt for quite some time that there are issues about our culture and the way we do work that need to be raised, and that hasn't been going anywhere, hence this post. If you're interested in seeing what Kent has to say, take a look at the post, it's linked in the description. A lot of it stemmed from this discussion, which started out as a technical discussion, but kind of got a bit heated uh, between Kent Overstreet and Michael Hocko. I won't go over the technical details of it, but the message that really pushed things over the edge, at least as far as the Code of Conduct Committee was concerned, was this one from Kent. Mitchell, if you think crashing processes is an acceptable alternative to error handling, you have no business writing kernel code. You have been stridently arguing for one bad idea after another, and it's an insult to those of us who give a shit about writing reliable software. You're arguing against basic precepts of kernel programming. Get your head examined, and get the frick out of here with this shit. Now one thing I've seen people say about this message is that Linus himself used to behave like this back in the day. You had Linus going on these kinds of rants fairly frequently. And people are saying, well, if it was acceptable then, why isn't this acceptable now? That kind of behavior was tolerated because it was Linus, but it wasn't acceptable even back then. And especially not today, now that the code of conduct is in place, and there are very clear rules about what is and isn't allowed. And today, I think even Linus wouldn't be able to get away with consistently making comments like this. There would be some kind of response from the code of conduct committee. And for the most part, Linus has mellowed out somewhat. He really doesn't make comments like this anymore. He's much more reasonable and accommodating when it comes to people within the kernel community. That has let a lot more people contribute to the Linux kernel, and although I don't really have any numbers to back this up, I get the feeling that the community overall is more inclusive nowadays. Now, the Code of Conduct Committee was already quite unhappy with Kent's behavior on several occasions, and this seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back. They posted this message to the Linux kernel mailing list. Kent, the Code of Conduct Committee has received reports about your conduct in this email discussion. Link to email where the violation took place, which we just saw earlier. Our community works on trust and respect and has agreed to abide by this code of conduct, which is documented here. Again, I won't go through the details, but I will leave a link in the description if you want to take a look. And I don't want to put words into the code of conduct committee's mouths, but I think in particular the standards that were, according to them, violated in this case were using welcoming and inclusive language, uh, gracefully accepting constructive criticism, and perhaps showing empathy towards other community members. That's my interpretation of this message. Uh, I don't want to imply that that's specifically what the Code of Conduct Committee said. They went on to say, The Code of Conduct Committee has determined that your written abuse of another community member required action on your part to repair the damage to the individual and the community. You took insufficient action to restore the community's faith in having otherwise productive technical discussions without the fear of personal attacks. Following the Code of Conduct interpretation process the Technical Advisory Board has approved, has approved the following recommendation. Restrict Kent Overstreet's participation in the kernel development process during the Linux kernel 6.13 kernel development cycle. Scope. Decline all pull requests from Kent Overstreet during the Linux 6.13 kernel development cycle. So this is relatively big news. Kent Overstreet has effectively been banned from participating in Linux kernel development for 6.13. So this is a temporary ban, it's not a permanent removal, but it is sending a strong message that if his behavior doesn't improve, and if he continues uh, posting things like this, it looks like there might not be a path forward for him to participate in the kernel community, which would effectively be a permanent ban. As for what this means for BcacheFS users, 
well, it seems like their file system won't be getting any updates for the next development cycle. If there are any critical bugs, then unfortunately they won't be fixed. However, if your system is using bcachefs and everything is working okay, well then maybe that's not a huge deal. Delaying the updates for one kernel version might not be the end of the world for you. Now, Kent actually wrote an apology. Uh, I'm reading this from his Patreon, uh, because the formatting here is a little bit nicer, but the same content is visible on the Linux kernel mailing list. By the way, after getting emails for three different people about this, I do want to apologize for things getting heated the other day, but I also need to tell you why I reacted the way I did. Firstly, it's nothing personal. I'm not axe grinding against you, although you were a major source of frustration for myself and Siren in the memory allocation profiling discussions, and I hope you can recognize that as well. But I do take correctness issues very seriously, and I will get frosty or genuinely angry if they're being ignored or brushed aside. The reality is that experience, and to be frank, standards of professionalism, do vary within the kernel community, and I have had some outrageous fights over things as bad as silent data corruption bugs, introduced in code I wrote by people who did not CC me no less. It was bad, and yes, it has happened more than once. So, I am not inclined to let things slide, even if it means being the asshole at times. Thankfully, most people aren't like that. Dave, Willie, Linus, we can be shouting at each other, but we still listen. And we know how not to take it personally and focus on the technical when there's something serious going on. Usually, when one of us is shouting, you'll find that there's a good reason and some history behind it, even if we also recognize the need to try to tone things down and not be too much of an asshole. Linus was reminding me of that yesterday. So for the record, I'm not trying to roadblock you or anyone else. I'm just trying to make sure we all have shit that works. And I have been noticing you stepping up in discussions more, and I'd like to encourage that if I may. Memory management has been lacking in strong technical leadership for a long time. Andrew's great on the process side. He makes sure things move along. But we haven't had anyone who's trying to keep everything important in their heads, who's able to point out to people where their work fits into the larger picture. And there's been some messy things that have built up over time. And a word on technical leadership, it doesn't mean being the one who's right all the time, although it does involve a lot of saying no to people. The people who seem the smartest, it's not raw IQ that they've got, although that helps, it's the ability to listen and quickly incorporate other people's ideas without drama or attachment. And the ability to maintain perspective, notice what people are blocked on without getting stuck on it, and think about how it fits into the wider perspective. Cheers, Kent. Now, personally, my impression was that this isn't much of an apology. There is a little bit of apologizing for his behavior, um, but at the same time, the impression that I got just from reading this and from the interactions that I've seen, which, again, are very limited, uh, are that Kent is a little bit stubborn, uh, particularly when it comes to technical disagreements. Which, admittedly, he does say that there were cases of other people introducing bugs, such as silent data corruption, which is absolutely one of the worst things that can happen to a file system. Getting upset about something like that is understandable. But at the same time, it seems like Kent is really stubborn when it comes to technical issues. So that's it. No bcachefs updates for Linux kernel 6.13. We'll see how this plays out in the future, and I hope that these people can all find some way to work together a bit better than they are now, because it would be a shame to have this file system removed from Linux when it seems to be pretty good, it has decent performance, and from a technical perspective, there's no real reason to remove it. So hopefully these interpersonal issues can be resolved. Thanks for watching.